Welcome to eWorks webinar. I'm Benedict Perry from eWorks and today I'm delighted to introduce Christina Hobner and I should have asked for the pronunciation. That's fine. Perfect. Yep, okay. From Catalyst. Uh, Catalyst is the maintainer of the Mahara project and a major development company for Mahara. Christina is one of the non-developers on the project and she's involved in answering questions in the community forums, asking questions on how to make Mahara better, writing the user manual, supporting Mahara user group organisers and spreading the word about Mahara. So guess what Christina is going to speak about? Mahara, of course, what it is and using Mahara. Thanks, Christina. Over to you. Thank you very much for the introduction, Bernadette. And um, welcome everybody on this uh, webinar call. I'm really happy to be presenting to you today from New Zealand um, and talk a little bit about Mahara, but in particular um, with its connection to Moodle. Um, so that we can take a look at, well, what have we done over the last few years in order to make that connection better, bring it into the modern times and um, how can you actually use that um, on your own. And um, as Bernadette said, the presentation is being recorded. I also posted the link to the slides in the chat so that you can follow them along there if you do want to increase the font size or want to look at um, something else in the slides, go back one or go forward one, you're very welcome to do that. And we'll share the presentation link to the recording um, after this webinar. Mahara is now already 13 years old. Actually, we've had um, the birthday just a couple of days ago, the anniversary, because the first commit um, was made in late September uh, 2006. And um, since then, it has been striving and thriving throughout the years um, because it is a very complementary system to learning management systems like Moodle. And what Mahara does really, really well is support the lifelong learning and where we start students in school, they start reflecting, um, working in projects ideally as well, um, take them into the tertiary sector where they then continue on their learning journey, um, again reflecting on their learning and increasing their repertoire of knowledge, but also increasing their skills and competencies. Then they're going off into professional life and portfolios can also be found there quite extensively. And um, from there also then, of course, in very specific workplaces. And Mahara can be found in all of these areas. And that's kind of really what attracted me to using the software back in 2008 uh, when I was at a university because it allowed us a lot of freedom to work with it, connect, uh, connect it to Moodle, but also use it as a standalone platform and um, give students the possibilities to share their learning, to record their learning, to keep it for themselves in this sort of personal learning environment um, where they had full control over what was going into their space. In contrast to the learning management system where they always needed to wait for a teacher or instructor to make an activity available so they could then do something in it. And so from my humble beginnings at uh, the University of Luxembourg in 2008, starting with Mahara, I then moved to New Zealand in mid-2010 uh, to start working at Catalyst, where I still am, um, after a little over nine years. And um, then started working more closely with the development team. And in 2014, then became the project lead for it, which also entails all the things that Bernadette mentioned and also the community facilitation for it. Because while Catalyst is a company that offers support services for Mahara and does a lot of the development work thanks to client projects, um, we are also the maintainer for it and therefore make sure that security updates are made, um, major version updates are coming out we have one in just about a month for Mahara 19.10, and that we can incorporate new features that um, people are requesting that um, make the software better, to make changes to it and keep it up to date and are therefore also keep it relevant. 
so that we are going with the times of what a modern portfolio software should provide to learners. And yet also still keep our unique Mahara touch on it, which of course is still very much the focus on lifelong learning, personal learning environment, and keeping the control with the students. Um, but of course, over the years, there have also been assessment features uh, that made it into Mahara. And so what I'm going to talk to you about today is very briefly show you some examples of um, what people do with Mahara, um, what sort of portfolios they can create, and then focus on the connection to Moodle and step you through how you can use Mahara for assignment purposes um, to make that connection to the LMS very clear, and then give you a brief outlook on some of the new features that you can look forward to when your platform is being upgraded. So I've been talking now a little bit about the lifelong learning, personal learning environment aspects. And for me, the creation of a portfolio um, definitely has kind of five activities in the foreground, especially when we are looking at it from the Mahara perspective, uh, looking at it as a, a learning portfolio, developmental portfolio, and also showcase portfolio. And conveniently, at least in English, um, all these five activities start with a C. So that's why we have the five Cs. And the first one is create. Students create their content. Students create their learning evidence, um, typically outside of um, the portfolio. And that can be a video, audio recording, that can be um, a sculpture, which they then take a photograph of or create a little video around it in order to capture what they have learned, um, capture maybe even their process of learning. Once they have that learning evidence, they then collect it in the online space in Mahara by either uploading their learning evidence or linking to it if it sits in a social uh, media site or on uh, sites like YouTube and um, cartoon creation softwares and other sites that they use on a regular basis already um, where they can also share their artifacts with others without necessarily needing to go through the portfolio. And now here we are at the stage of the creation and collection where we could just say, okay, that is it. This is a portfolio. Um, and that is where a lot of people do stop um, by just collecting everything and having it there. But really the a very important aspect of a portfolio only comes in when we have this curative element, when students curate their learning evidence, when they are not just collecting it and showing it to a teacher and say, hey, see, this is what I have done, but when they also reflect on that, when they say why they have done something a particular way, what they have learned from it, what they might want to do better next time, what they consider trialing again, uh, reusing it, so that they really think about it, um, what their learning was and how it impacts them as a person and also their wider community. And because that learning process is oftentimes not done in isolation, um, but we talk to people, engage with them, we have conversations about them. So students converse, um, students um, receive feedback, receive comments on their portfolios and then can include those are incorporated into their portfolios because they sit on the learning evidence itself or they sit on a page and therefore can influence the further thinking of the student in those areas. And lastly, we also have the connect element um, where students can work collaboratively on portfolios, can create group portfolios or simply have group conversations around topics that are of interest to them. 
And when I say students, I don't just mean school students or tertiary students, but really everybody who is learning something. So probably should have started out with the term learner, um, because it can also be adults in an organization um, that requires a portfolio in order to showcase skills and competencies. And so these five activities create, collect, curate, converse, and connect form the basis um, for portfolio discussions because they encompass a lot of the activities that are going on and to a degree also that are important and necessary to have in a portfolio in order not just for it to be an archive or a summary, but really have that reflective and learning component on it. And so people around the world um, create portfolios like that and do wonderful things with them. And when you go through the slides, you can click on the individual screenshots and then be taken into the, the, those specific portfolios in order to explore them further on your own. Um, here, I just want to showcase a few of them to also show you the the breadth of what you can do with a Mahara portfolio and how creative you can be and in what different circumstances you can use it. So here we have an engineering project um, from Dublin City University in Ireland where the project is explained, um, where the evidence is shared and where the student also shows uh, different project faces and what that um, prosthetic can, can do. This is a very straightforward portfolio, but they do use certain design elements in order to make it their own, personalize it, and really showcase also, this is my portfolio. Um, and I differentiate myself to other students from by using certain elements in it. There's also a more simple looking portfolio like this one here, um, dealing with philosophy. And what the student has done here is played more with design elements, keeping the page very simple, but yet still incorporating videos, um, having text there, using arrangement of the individual elements to form a narrative and to really make sure that the point comes across. And because that portfolio can be split up over multiple pages, also has the possibility to lead the viewer through that portfolio, take them on the hand and tell the story of what they want to uh, showcase. But portfolios are not just used in the classroom. Um, and with individual students, they can also be used for group projects here, like evidence um, from Scotland's Rural College, Barony campus, um, where students, typically about three students, work together on a project and then fill in the group portfolios. So templates have been created where students can then add their content, add their personal reflections, but also report back on the project. And this project is also linked to Moodle, where the assignments are directly given in Moodle and then students can jump over into their portfolio. And portfolios are increasingly also used for work integrated learning. They are, they are a fantastic resource because it makes it possible for the lecturers to stay in uh, or, and the well um, support Port staff to stay in touch with the students while they are off campus, while they are in companies, in certain circumstances, of course, sometimes overseas. And, um, work in real life and can still report back on what they have learned, um, where they are struggling to get feedback from their instructors or also share their portfolios with um, their, um, their mentors in the company in order to see how they can improve what they are already doing really, really well and where they might want to go. And these experiences are wonderful then also to share with people afterwards and make them integral parts of employability portfolios because through the evidence that is displayed in these portfolios, um, a future employer gets a better idea of um, how committed students are to their work, um, how happy they are in doing what they are doing, um, when they can see pictorial evidence or even a video explaining what they have done and then reflecting on that. 
And of course, portfolios, Mahara included, can also be used for more, um, stri more structured uh, approaches um, where a portfolio needs to be kept for competency assessment or competency evaluation. So if you're looking to either teachers or in this case registered nurses, they need to complete a number of competencies through their registration period and need to evidence them as well as report back on them, reflect on them, and then say whether they are achieving these competencies or not. And so in Mahara, we have the functionality of smart evidence, which helps us not just to tick off these competencies and provide evidence against them, but also have a visualization available, which makes it really easy for everybody involved to see where um, a nurse already achieved a competency, where they are still working on it, and where they might not even yet have any evidence because then an assessor does not have to go through those pages just yet. And those were just a few of the examples that you can take a look at and see how others in the world are dealing with competency, uh, with portfolios, what they're using it for. And um, for the Barony campus example, I already briefly alluded that it was um, hooked into Moodle. So let's actually now take a closer look at that. You might already have your Mahara connected to Moodle via Mnet. Um, what we have been looking into over the last couple of years is to actually use web services to connect to Mahara. So that we have the connection going from Moodle into Mahara which is the typical direction for authentication purposes and also for assignment purposes, but conversely, also go from Mahara back into Moodle so that we can, for example, push a grade into the Moodle gradebook, or in the future, ideally also send certain other elements from the portfolio back into the LMS. And we are achieving that these days with the help of web services. And one of the web services is most likely known to a number of you already, and that is um, Learning Tools Interoperability, this LTI standard, which is a subset of the full set of web services and makes it possible to connect Moodle to a lot of other um, applications in a very standard way so that um, it is easier for the receiving applications to do the authentication, sending grades back without having to do a lot of custom work, but therefore allowing us also to connect to other learning management systems. And of course, by using LTI, we are also achieving the authentication from Moodle into Mahara. Simply by clicking a link, students don't have to use a password anymore. So what does that now look like in terms of the assignment? Well, in Moodle, at the moment, you would set up an external tools activity. Um, we are working on making a Moodle-specific plugin um, that allows assignment submission again via the activity module so that you can use the normal rubric, marking workflows, and all of those features that you're used to, and not just the um, paired down functionality that is available via LTI alone. <coughs> Sorry. And so once you've set up your activity um, for the assignment submission, um, jumping from Moodle into Mahara, um, as teacher, you would define on the Mahara site um, certain parameters to create that assignment and can decide whether student um, submissions should be emailed, um, whether the portfolio is then unlocked after grading so that students can continue working on it, <coughs> and whether an archive shall be created um, once the grading has finished. And this is really where the advantage is over still using Mnet uh, to connect Moodle to Mahara, because we, of course, added functionality to the new way of connecting the two platforms, allowing us now to make an archive. 
and therefore be able to keep the submitted portfolio once it's been released in case there is, um, in case it does need to be looked at again. So now once this is done, the student can log in, go to the activity in Moodle. <coughs> Very sorry about that. Go to the activity in Moodle and select one of their portfolios um, in order to submit that to the Moodle activity. Now we are becoming the teacher again. Teacher goes into Mahara and uh, when they click on that activity um, via Moodle, they will see a marking screen where they can see which students have already submitted their portfolios and can click the grade link, which then takes them to the actual portfolio of the student that they can then review um, leave comments on and really do their, their regular Mahara um, giving a feedback because all the feedback stays in Mahara and only the grade is sent back to Moodle. That is a limitation of LTI that we are encountering because we are not um, able to also send feedback back. Whereas when the Mahara assignment submission plugin for Moodle is available, you can put feedback directly also in Moodle as you're used to in but going with the standard implementation, um, the great link would be clicked and then on the portfolio itself a grade can be given, which then is being displayed again on this overview page um, in the form of numbers between 0 and 100. And then when the student or the teacher goes into the Moodle gradebook, the grade is automatically pushed through to Moodle and makes it possible for everybody to see the grade there and then of course also turn it into a letter grade as needed um, through the scale that is being applied. And that is the connection between Moodle and Mahara. Those of you that have been using the Mahara assignment submission plugin in the past don't really see too many differences in terms of what the technology can do um, because it is still the connection between Moodle and Mahara allowing the authentication, pushing name and email address through and then being able to assess a portfolio from within Moodle. However, what is new is um, that archiving functionality as well as um, using more robust and modern ways of connecting the two systems with each other. So it is more sustainable in that way as well. Now, um, being so close to the next release of Mahara, I, it would be remiss of me if I did not mention some of the new features that are coming up. And one of them is actually also an extension to the um, LTI work because up to this point it has not been possible for students to resubmit a, tab, um, a portfolio. So if they received feedback from their instructor, um, the portfolio needed to be released back to the student before they could actually um, continue working on it and then it was not possible for them to push it back into the Moodle activity because a grade had already been given. Now it is, it is going to be possible from the end of October on when we are going to release Mahara 19.10 that students can um, resubmit their portfolios before a grade has been given by a teacher. Therefore making it easier to be in that normal workflow of um, yeah, continuously working on it until a final grade is given. But looking at your sites, seeing that you are moving not just from 1904 to 19.10, but from 16.10 to 19.04, or maybe even 19.10, um, I just want to give you a very brief overview um, of the new features that you can expect. And of, um, there's a long list, so I kind of picked a few of them 
um, that could be of interest to you. So we've already mentioned the LTI auto archiving functionality and resubmitting of um, assignments. And um, we've also implemented extended tagging. So people can now um, view pages based on tags by others. Um, you can create a page based on um, content that was tagged with one or more specific tags so that it's very easy to push all learning evidence um, for one topic onto a page and then start the curation process rather than needing to remember was it a file, was it a journal entry that I had and therefore making it easier to have that collection there. 19.10 um, we are going to have assignment plans, um, a feature developed um, in Germany where it will be possible to set up plans in a group and then students can select which of the tasks with in the plan they want to complete. They can immediately have task descriptions attached as well as template portfolios that they can then fill in. And all of these are copied automatically into their accounts as soon as they select some of those tasks. Um, that is feature developed by the University of Bremen. Um, we are also going to have a much simpler layout, um, being able to minimize and extend and and change the size in general of blocks directly on the edit screen rather than needing to go into the settings screen. And one of the other big features we have is the placeholder block. Um, the working title of that one was actually Magic Block, a development work um, Viet Catalyst conducted for Dublin City University. Um, where we are now making it easier for people to create templates without having to predefine the type of block that the students would have to use in their portfolios. Because right now you're selecting an image block or a text block or a video block. Um, and then if the student doesn't have a video, they need to remove the block and put a different block in. With the placeholder block functionality, it is actually possible to put a placeholder there, just give it a heading, and then the students select which type of block they actually want to use. You might already be familiar with um, Smart Evidence itself. Um, for 1904, we created a, a Smart Evidence edit, um, editor which uh, makes it possible to now create those competency frameworks that we've seen earlier for the registered nurses directly in Mahara without um, needing to have a bit of technical understanding. But these, of course, are all just a very small sample of the new features um, that have been developed since 16.10 and um, since that version had been released in October 2016. So you can find all of these features documented and highlighted also which ones came in, in which version of Mahara in the user menu, um, where you can then also read up on them. And usually every version also has a video, sometimes shorter, sometimes longer, describing um, highlights of that release so that you can get a quick overview um, of the biggest features that impact people. And if you have any questions, then of course, and in your case, oftentimes um, Bernadette and her team, or in the wider Mahara Sense, um, the community on mahara.org is available where you can ask questions and also engage with others in learning about portfolios, sharing ideas, and also asking um, for advice or connecting with other people. And now I think we still have um, a good amount of time available for questions. So I'll hand back over to Bernadette so that she can free up the microphones and the chat room.